Hi, my name is Solo P1, and before I even get into the review, I'm pissed off, man. I'm pissed off. You know when you just get one of those weeks where just nothing works out for you, nothing at all. I said, right, when this season starts, I'm gonna make sure I got all my equipment, everything all laid out for me, everything set, but nothing happened. Nothing at all. I ordered my microphone six days ago. Six days. They said it was going to ship and I was going to get it for Friday night. And did I get it? No. The reason I'm getting a mic because a week ago, the original mic that I used, the Blue Yeti, completely stopped working. I tried unscrewing it. Trying to fix it, going on YouTube videos, trying to tinker with it, trying to mess with the USB at the bottom with the Blue Yeti. I had that mic for a couple of years. It done me well, brilliant mic. But now it's not working. Every time I plug it into the PC, man, you functioned. Completely not working. The light comes on, but that's about it. I went onto a lot of forums. I contacted Blue Yeti. Nothing happened. Nothing is working on that mic. So I so, thought, right, I'm going to buy another mic. Not a Blue Yeti, another one. I ordered it, and they said it will come on Friday. Friday. I said, well, that's fine. I'll get it Friday. I'll do an unboxing. Everything will be fine. I'll queue my video up, record, play, done. But it never worked out the way. I got an email this morning saying it's not coming today. It's coming Monday. So I contacted the delivery service. I said, I don't need it Monday. I need it now. They said, look, there's nothing we could do about it. I goes, no, when I paid for that delivery service, it said it was guaranteed delivery by Friday. Don't put it in the delivery service if you're not going to deliver. Don't put it in the um, uh, on your website. It's like, oh, yeah, with guaranteed delivery by Friday. They took my money. They took my money for the, de for the special delivery. Oh, yeah, they took that. But where's my stuff? I got nothing, no mic, no nothing. So I contacted him. I said, right, I want my money back. I go, what you mean? He said, it's on the way. I goes, no. Have I got it now? No. When's it coming? Monday. It says on the website, guaranteed delivery by Friday. This is why I put my money down because it says on the website, Email guaranteed delivery by Friday and it never come. So I put in a complaint. They refunded my money for the delivery. Mike's coming on Monday. So at the moment, before the review starts, I'm using this headset. Alienware headset. If the sound's bad, I'm sorry. But this is all I've got at short notice. A headset. Usually, if you watch all my videos, you know I've always got my Blue Yeti mic. All queued up, ready to go. But I haven't got it today, so I've got to use the Alienware website. But enough of me rambling. This is the 2020 F1 qualifying review. Finally, we're back. After seven months. Seven months of torture. Watching the virtual racing, which I enjoyed. I've got to admit, I enjoyed it. Watching the virtual racing. Watching repeats on Sky. Watching old racing repeats with Ayrton Senna and um, Schumacher and Alan Frost. You know, the list goes on. Watching the 2019 season. No, watching the 2019 season. I'm repeat. I, I think I watched the 2019 season about three or four times. Classic races. Suzuka 88, Suzuka 89. Monaco 91. Monaco 92, Monaco 93, Silverstone, it doesn't matter which Silverstone is, they're all classics. But I just wanted some new racing. I was thinking, is this season ever going to start? Is it ever going to start? Coming in, Monaco cancelled. Didn't really bother me if Monaco got cancelled or not. 
It wouldn't bother to me if they took Monaco off the calendar. Completely. That wouldn't bother me at all. If you watch my videos and you know me, you know I don't like Monaco. Not at all. Then they still took the French Grand Prix off. They started taking Grand Prix off every other day. There was a note that was coming up on my phone saying this is it. This, this Grand Prix has been cancelled. Baku's been cancelled. That one hurt me. Because I like Azerbaijan. Baku. I love that Grand Prix. And that's gone for this season. Then they cancelled the Dutch Grand Prix. Never saw the Dutch Grand Prix before. Not live. Last time the Dutch Grand Prix come on, I wasn't even around. I wasn't even born. So I've never actually... I've saw an old video, but I never... I want to see it now. Live. So that, that Grand Prix's gone for another year. I actually tried to get tickets for that Grand Prix, but the ticket sold out within 10 minutes. Probably 99.9% .9 of the audience who brought the tickets of the fans were Dutch. Guaranteed to see Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen is a superstar in Holland. He's like Schumacher was in Germany. He's a king in Holland. They love him there. They love him everywhere, but in Holland, obviously, that's his home country. He's like a king. So them tickets... We had no chance of getting them tickets. The COVID-19. Whoever watched my videos before the COVID-19, before this before this started to spread this disease, this nasty virus. I hope you all um, hope you all kept safe. I hope you all listen to the rule of what the government says, even though the government sometimes can be clueless. But Whoever watched my videos before the virus, I hope you are all safe and watching this video today or whenever I upload it. Because it's been a tr it's been a um, horrible time for everybody. For everybody all around the world, from every sport, basketball, football, swimming, American football, baseball, rugby, tennis. Every sport's been affected. Everybody from all corners of the globe have been infected. Have been affected. Effect, affected by this nasty virus. Things are starting to come down a little bit now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this stuff just goes away. And we can get back to normal. I want everything just to get back to normal. We're watching F1 today. Watching the paddock. Well, yesterday, we started watching in practice. I thought, you know what? Look at this. The I know they have to wear their masks, but it just seems weird that they're all wearing masks. Masks. Toto's got a building mask. I don't know what Toto's wearing. It's something like when you when you see them roads, them road guys, the guys that build the roads when they're drilling the roads and they got them big masks on. Toto's got one of them. They're all wearing masks. You can't see the faces. All you can see is the eyes. I know they've got to follow that protocol. But it still seems weird. It seems weird from a fan's point of view, from my point of view. I'm not talking for anybody else. I'm talking for myself. And again, not seeing the people in the stadium, that's weird as well. It's like when I was watching football a couple of weeks ago, last week, when I was watching Liverpool, and I was watching all the other teams play. It just seems weird, no fans in the crowd. I know... I know the reason why there's no um, people in the crowd. I know, but it still seems weird watching a football match with no one there, watching a basketball match with no one. I mean, watching a, um, a tennis match with no one there, the charity a tennis match. It just seems weird. And watching Formula One today, yesterday and today with no fans. But anyway, I'm just I've got I ain't got much news today. Um, I wasn't. I'll tell you now. I wasn't prepared. That threw me off not having more. There was a few of the stuff I even got from my video as well. But I start. I put a few notes down. Let's just start from practice one and practice two. The bias commentary. All I heard all weekend was Paul Dereste running his gums. Running his gums. Talking about the Daz system. Talking about Max Verstappen. Talking about Max Verstappen's going to get Paul. Max Verstappen's going to win the race. Talking about the DAS system, there's got to be something wrong with the DAS system. There's going to be a few teams protesting against it. No, not a few teams, just one. We all know it's going to be Christian Horner protesting to the FIA that the DAS system, they need to look into the DAS system. 
And what happened? It came back and I said that the DAS system is legal. 100% legal. Now, what other excuse are you going to come out with? Are you still saying that Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen could win tomorrow? That could, he could win tomorrow. He could. If he could come out tomorrow, Lewis Hamilton could slip in the first corner. Bottas might go off onto the stones. Max Verstappen might get third and win. It could be like that. It's a race. Anything can happen. But just to say that, oh, yeah, Max is going to win. Max is going to win. The way he's going out is guaranteed Max is going to win the Grand Prix. If Max Verstappen was eighth on the grid, he would still come out and say, Max is going to win the title. Max, 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 Max. Paul the rest there should just walk around with a t-shirt saying, I love Max. I love Max. Because Max gives me a lift home every night after the Grand Prix. When the Grand Prix finishes, it gives me a lift home to Monaco. I love super, 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 super Max. That's what he should just come out and say. I'll put on his t-shirt. Even Jensen Button himself was looking at Paul de Resta and thinking, come on, mate, that's just too much. Just let it go. Mercedes car's faster. Let it go. Martin Brundle, this is what I love about Martin Brundle. Straight shooter. Straight shooter. He just come out and says, nah, it don't really matter about the dust system. Even without the dust system, Mercedes is still the faster car. <laughs> Done. Finished. Not beating around the bus. Not chatting crap like he does every week. Paul De Resta is chapping his gums like he does every season, week in, week out. And when the season starts, week in, week out, week in, week out. Now on to Ferrari. Ferrari's pace is done. Finished. Not like, remember last season, the two races in Spa and Monza. And they had Christian Horner. And you had Toto Wolf investigating it, going to the FIA, say check it out. They checked it out. They was using they was using the wrong oil in the engine, and there was rumours that they was tweaking the engine. So what did the FIA do? Went behind closed doors and we sorted it with Ferrari. No punishment needed, but we've sorted it out with Ferrari. That's basically that's what that is. But where was Ferrari's pace today? Sebastian Vettel out of Q2. Now, a lot of people are going to say on the internet, he done it on purpose. I'm one of them. I think, I think Sebastian Vettel does not give a crap about Ferrari. Sebastian Vettel doesn't give a crap where they're finishing the table. He's just, he knows that Ferrari are going nowhere this season. And because they didn't want him, they didn't even want to negotiate the contract. He, he spoke to um, the, the head, the team leader of Ferrari, phoned up Sebastian Vettel over the phone. We don't, lock, we don't, we don't need that. There's no negotiation. End of the season, you're gone. That's how dumb Ferrari is. If you're gonna do that, wait until at least halfway through the season to tell him. Not at the beginning of the season, even before the season even started. So you know, Vettel. I wouldn't be surprised if Vettel does this all through the season to compromise Ferrari, even though the speed's not over there anyway. Because Charles Leclerc was nowhere to be seen in the qualifying. Sebastian Vettel doesn't give a crap. I wouldn't be surprised if Toto, they're going to say to Sebastian Vettel, you know what, do it for me. I'll let you have the, I'll let you have the Alfa Romeo seat next year. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying. But Sebastian Vettel, in my opinion, he don't give a crap about Ferrari. They screwed him. He's going to screw them. Simple. He's gone at the end of the season. They chose Charles over him. Done. Five-year deal. <laughs> five-year deal. Let me tell you something now. Charles Leclerc did not warrant a five-year deal. And after a couple of years, he's going to be thinking to himself, did I make the right choice to stay with Ferrari? Because Ferrari's car's not going to not Ferrari's car's not going to improve. It's not going to improve this year. It's not going to improve next year. The regulation don't change for another couple of years. So he's thinking to himself, he's going to be a mid, he might be a mid-table team, and he's going to think, why did I sign that contract? Why did I sign for five years? Why can't I just sign for three years and see what happens? But he signed for five years. And for me, Charles Leclerc didn't warrant a five-year deal. I don't care about you, Ferrari fans that don't like it. I'm going to tell you straight now, solo P1. If you don't like it, put your comments below. 
And if not, shut up, go away. Because Charles Kerr did not warrant a five-year deal. No way. And that's it. Faria done. Now, the next team to come up, for me, I'm going to tell you now, I think could finish higher than Ferrari this season, is the pink Mercedes. That's what everybody says. Racing points. Soon to be Aston Martin next year. Racing points. They were showing very they were showing fast speed. Good speed. Yeah. In practice and in qualifying. Perez Stroll doing the business for racing points. And I think they're gonna be up there this season. Renault showing good pace in practice. McLaren showing good pace. Especially Lando Norris. Showing good pace in qualifying. I hope good for Lando Norris. He's got a stamp his throat in that team. Season starts in before the um the not start before the season ends, right? He's got to show his pace and let people know when Daniel Ricciardo comes into this team, he's gonna be the guy who's going to lead McLaren into the future when they get that new Mercedes engine. No more messing around. No more shaving your hair. No more shaving your bollocks. No more sh shaving your toenails. No more messing around and grinning, acting like an idiot. Get down to business. You've got to show Zach Brown that you're the man who's going to lead the team. You're the man. You're the future, future world champion. You're the youth. You're the guy who's going to come. You're going to grab it by its neck and run with it. I hope he does, because Landon Norris is a good driver. But I just, I hope he just comes out of these stupid games, coming out shaving his hair, doing this and that. I don't care about that. All I want him to do is get on that track and show his stuff. Because Russell is most likely Russell's going to be at Mercedes next year. I ain't going to see Russell messing around. Russell is a pro, a true pro. I loved him from F2. Before he won the title in F2, I just liked the way he carries himself. I liked him enough to. He's got to Williams. I don't think he's going to renew his contract with Williams. He's, he's not going to be there at Williams next season. For me, he's either going to go to Mercedes or he might go to um, Racing Point. I don't, it's one of them teams he's going to go to. Eventually, he's going to go to Mercedes. If he's not next year, if he goes to Racing Point, because obviously Toto's got a piece of that team now. It's going to be, um, well, it's not going to be a Racing Point. It's going to be Aston Martin. So I could just see him going there if he doesn't get the Mercedes. But eventually, he's going to get that Mercedes slot. To me, the two drivers are going to be at Mercedes in the future. Not yet. It's going to be um, Akan and it's going to be George Russell. They're the two guys, but Akan has to show his stuff this season. I know it's been up for nearly two years, Akan, I know. But he has to show his stuff this season. Because F1 doesn't wait around. They don't care if you've had this time off. If you're not producing the stuff in the season, they ain't going to want you. It's not personal. It's just the way, it's just the way F1 is. So... Bottas comes out and gets um, qualifying. Me, my prediction from the beginning, Bottas. 100% was Bottas. I thought one and two Mercedes. The Bottas is going to get pole. Hamilton's going to get second. The yellow flag come out. Come to me, compromise Hamilton's lap. Hamilton saying it never. It did. He's just trying to play it down. He played it down. The yellow flag come out. A big puff of smoke. He slowed, he slowed down a little bit. And he went back on the throttle. The big cloud of smoke. Can we actually said on the in, on the interview after, in the press conference, the um, press conference after qualifying, that the big puff of smoke come up and he couldn't hardly see it. Hopefully, he didn't hit a car. The natural human instinct, if you see a cloud of smoke, straight away, the first thing you're gonna put, you're gonna take your foot off the throttle. He, he saw the yellow flag. Daniel Ricciardo was complaining on the radio. He was saying, "Why did they bring a yellow flag out? Why did they just carry on?" But the yellow flag came out, and the, when the yellow flag comes out, your foot comes off the throttle. It's just a natural instinct, especially, like I said, Hamilton saw the cloud of smoke. He saw it and thought, that's it. Smoke, take the foot off, compromise his lap, done. He doesn't want to come out and say, oh, he did it, did it, compromise his lap. Out of respect for his team, I, I get that. I get where he's coming from, but it compromises his lap. That's it. It compromises his lap. Now, I've got, I'm, I'm going to get into some videos now. Sorry it's not a long one today. Well, it's been gone for 20 minutes. I'm going to get into a video. Um, see if we've got any interviews on here. Well, we've got George Russell coming. It says, George Russell exceeded my expectations today. George Russell, very good. 
outdone the car. That's what great drivers do. They outdo the car. George Russell today outdone his car. F1. Advertisement. I'm just going to get that queued up here. Yeah, George Russell done well today. Um, Latifi, nowhere. Again, George Russell showing why he deserved to be a bigger team. Let's play this video now. George, P17, six tenths quicker than your So I'm not sure if you heard that. I'm going to replay it now anyway, because the sound. Yeah, I got it. I told you, nothing prepared. I'm going to play it again. The video, George Russell. F1 is back. Yeah, the video went cute, like I said. Um, yeah, to me, George Russell. Um, yeah, he's doing good. He outperformed the car. He wasn't. He was quite shocked for the time. He was saying he could have got. The, he got the slipstream off Alban. And he reckons he could have got into Q2. So this is George Russell. Your teammate. That's a George P17, six tenths quicker than your teammate. That's a pretty good return for your yep. Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. I think you know less than a tenth away from Q2, and this time you know pure pace. I think that's the pace of the car, which is positive. I'm a little bit gutted we didn't just creep in. I think we had the potential. Had I nailed a slipstream, um, but nevertheless pleased with the result. Really? So you think you could have got into Q2 today? I think if, like I said, if we nail the slipstream, we could we could have got it. I think I uh, got a really good slipstream from Alex on the on the previous uh, session, but as the track's obviously improving constantly, I went quicker overall, but I lost two tenths in the straight. So, like I say, if everybody had the perfect slipstream, maybe they'd all be in the same position. But nevertheless, it's it's nice to sort of be here and not say in another P19. <laughs> it's a, a good positives to take from today. Then that's the start to the season you would have liked to have seen. Yeah, definitely. I think, to be honest, um, exceeded my expectations. Even I, I knew we'd made a step forward. I didn't. I honestly didn't think we'd be in this position. I thought we'd be still on the back row of the grid. So, I'm pleased. I think we've done a very good job um, as a team to get the most out of our car. Let's see what we can do tomorrow. That's George Russell sounding very confident, and so be it. He should. He should sound confident. Um, he done good today. He could have got in Q2 today, very close. He got lucky. Like said he got the slipstream off Albon, and he could have got into Q2, but just weren't happening. They weren't having it. But again, I think they've got a few upgrades coming to the next race, which is going to be Austria again, and we'll see how it goes there. Now we've got Esteban Ocon because he don't feel satisfied with the gap to the rest of the grid. So let's play Esteban. This is Esteban Ocon. Good grammar and spelling advertisement again this is actually how i'm playing this on the f1 um, website it was your first qualier in a long time uh, this aspect could uh, in your opinion influence uh, your result today i mean i, I don't want to find excuses in in any case i think uh, today there was quite a few details that we didn't do right and uh, i want to review first and see what what exactly happened but for sure the gap is very, very big, and this is uh, this is why I don't feel satisfied, you know, today. Um, but you know, we'll review and come back stronger tomorrow. It was just the first qualifying of the season, but can you already say that this car has a 
little step ahead from the car that you drove during the testing at this aspect can help you during the race tomorrow? Um, well, for sure it is, a, it is a stronger car than what we uh, had in Barcelona test. Uh, but I think everyone worked hard and uh, everyone did, did a step ahead. And uh, for us, it wasn't enough today. So we need to yeah, keep working. But look, he shouldn't beat up himself. Look, the guy's been out for two years. He just come back. He's, he can't expect miracles, you know. I reckon as the season progresses, he's, um, Ocon's going to catch up. So, what, who else have we got? We've got a few videos here. We've got Valtteri Bottas. He, felt, he said he felt very good in the car. Yeah, you got pulled, didn't you? Adverts again. Annoying adverts. Yeah, um, he, said he, felt, he said he felt good in the car, but he got pulled, so yeah, it was obvious. Obvious. There's Valtteri Bottas. Behind that mask, is this Valtteri 3.0 if you like? <laughs> I don't know about those numbers. I don't really, really care. But I just felt felt good, and obviously it's exactly how I wanted to start a season. But it is only Saturday. Uh, the main day is, is tomorrow, and um, already have my thoughts for on on on, on that and uh, trying to maximize and try to turn this pole into a victory. But yeah, felt very confident, very good in the car today, and managed to get all the things right at least on the first lap you've always gone well at this track it's been a good track for you in the past tomorrow's challenges will they be the heat will they be that red bull pre pushing down your neck or pressing down your neck i suppose well uh, we see many times that red bull even if they're slightly behind in, in qualifying they can be st still having really strong race car so we we don't want to go tomorrow to thinking that it's only us so we think and hope there's going to be threat from from elsewhere and um, it's also going to be a good battle with me and Lumis, I have no doubt. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle between him and Lewis. He's going, I said my prediction from the beginning, I thought but Bottas will get the pole and Lewis will get the win and I'm going to stick to that because Bottas always does well here, especially in qualifying and he just loves his track, just like he likes Russia, loves the Russia track as well. Um, let's get uh, Max Verstappen, Max is planning to fight Mercedes. Well, yeah, obviously you're going to fight Mercedes, but, you know, see how it goes. Adverts again, they're just killing it. There's my chair. Um, there we go. It's been looking like Mercedes had almost a half a second. Max, that looked like a great job today. It's been looking like Mercedes had almost a half a second advantage all weekend. So, is that the maximum out of the car today, do you think? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm happy to be third. Um, of course, the gap is a little bit too big to what we would have liked. Um, yeah, I think anyway, around a single lap around here, we are not the best. Um, so um, we we'll have a few things to look at, what we can do better. Um, but yeah, for tomorrow, different strategy, different tires to start on. It's going to be warmer, so it's going to be a, a different day. That doesn't mean that uh, suddenly Mercedes will be slow, but I hope it will just close the gap a little bit and uh, we can at least fight them. And um, yeah, then we'll, we'll see what happens. I was going to ask you about that because obviously you're going to start on the medium tyres. Temperature's a little bit higher tomorrow as well. Blistering's going to be a concern for some. Is this a real opportunity for you? Well, uh, we'll try. I mean, um, I felt good yesterday, yesterday on, on the mediums um, and it was a bit colder. Um, so let's hope the others uh, run into some trouble. Uh, but yeah, first of all, we, uh, we need to have a good start. I don't want to do the same as last year. Um, and, uh, and then we'll see uh, how it goes. So that's Max Verstappen. Um, his strategy, he's gonna. I think he's, he's gonna go medium. Everybody's starting on the stuff. Max Verstappen's gonna start on the medium to soft, and I think uh, Mercedes is gonna be soft to hard. That's the way I'd go because this is why Max Verstappen um, kept the medium tires on in Q2. That enabled him to start on the race tomorrow on the medium tires to do that long stint, and then he's gonna go onto the soft to try and catch Mercedes at the end which will most probably will be on the hard, the Mercedes will. So, one more. We're going to have Lewis. We've got a fight on our hands. There's Lewis. There you go. More adverts again. Let's kill it with the adverts on here. Hi, Lewis. Hi. Hi. Um, did you get slowed down? Did you get the yellow flags during your 
final lap there. We didn't quite I see I didn't see it. No, I can see a yellow flag. So, so uh, a one twelve thousandth of a second difference between the two cars today. Yeah. Uh, but making that up into turn one tomorrow? Uh, yes, it's going to be... I hope so. I mean, it's a very, very short run down to turn one. Um, Valtteri did a great job today and got to do a better job naturally. Um, and it's a long race tomorrow, so we'll see what we can do. We're very, very close um, here. This is a very strong track for Valtteri. There's a, you can look at all the tracks across the year and there are tracks that sometimes I'm stronger, sometimes he's stronger, and this is one of his. So to be that close, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, of course, always want to be ahead when it is that close, but um, you know, tomorrow is where it counts. And talking of Max, Max is starting on those medium tyres tomorrow. Temperatures look like they might be sl slightly hotter as well. Is that going to be a real concern that he's going to be able to do something with those? Uh, I think it's going to make it de very tough for us tomorrow. Um, degradation should probably be quite high compared to what we saw in P2, which was not as hot as today. So I think the race is going to be a lot closer than it was in terms of uh, performance today. Um, so we've got a fight on our hands for sure. So that's Lewis Hamilton saying he's got a fight on his hands. He's going to be racing with Bottas tomorrow. It's going to be an interesting race. It's going to be a very close race between Bottas and Hamilton. But my pick from the beginning was Bottas to get the pole, Hamilton to get the win. Like I said previously, I'm sticking to that. But before I go, I'm going to get the final standings. Bottas on pole, second Lewis Hamilton, third Matt Verstappen, fourth Lando Norris, fifth Alex Alban, fifth, sixth Sergio Perez, seventh Charles Leclerc, eighth Carla Sainz, ninth Lance Stroll, tenth Daniel, tenth Daniel Ricciardo, eleventh Sebastian Vettel, um, twelfth um, Pierre Gasly, 13th Daniel Fiat, 14th Esteban Akan, 15th Roman Grosjean, 16th Magnussen, 17th George Russell, 18th Antonio Giovinazzi, 19th Kimi Raikkonen, 10th and 20th Nicholas Latifi. So George Russell finishing higher than Antonio Giovinazzi and Kimi Raikkonen. So hats off to George Russell. To me, future world champion, if he keeps his head clean, keeps his mouth shut, rolls with the punches. I can see him go, um, going to Mercedes one day and winning the World Championship. And that will be great for him and be great for all George Russell fans. So this year I'm going to be signing out now. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be more prepared tomorrow. It'll be a race day tomorrow. It's going to be an interesting race. Like I said, I can't wait. But for me, the biggest surprise of the whole qualifying was Ferrari, where Sebastian Vettel um, finished. He didn't even get into Q3. He didn't even get to Q3. Did he do it on purpose or didn't he? It's one of them. We're never going to know. So, this is Solo P1 signing out of the 2020 F1 season with Austria. See you tomorrow. Bye.